thoughts that trouble me Many are they that rise up against me Many there'll be which say of my soul There's no help for him in God shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head and now my soul sings great is the Lord and greatly to be praised Good evening, good evening, everyone. We want to say God bless each and every one of you out here on this evening. We want to thank God for all of you tuning in each and every week on the best gospel, the best praise talk show, the Timmy Radio broadcast. And tonight we are broadcasting Be Free from the Inside Out on another wonderful Monday evening. Such a cold day today. Talking about some snow tomorrow, but either way, we are just so blessed to be back on the airways once again and we want you to tune in every monday night at 7 p.m so at this time let's give the radio host amen a great hand clap amen amen come on let's clean praise the lord praise the lord oh praise the lord god is good thank you jesus that's when you blessed me and you did just what you said. Amen. God is so amazing. I love that song. That's when you blessed me, God. When I gave my all, that's when you blessed me and you kept your promises. You did just what you said. Welcome to Be Free from the Inside Out. I am your radio host, Antoinette McCormick. Thank you so much for that int introduction, Pastor Nino. I am so glad each and every one of you have joined me again tonight. I know you realize the time change um, from 7.30 to um, 8, and now we're at 7 to 7.30. So thank you so much for joining me and, and for clicking on this station. God is so awesome. He is so wonderful. And for those of you that will not catch the live feed tonight, um, I thank you for um, hitting the replay. Um, God is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We are going to go into a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this amazing Monday evening. We thank you, Lord God, for we are in March. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for springing up great things for us, dear God. We thank you for life, health, and strength, dear God. We thank you for a new season in our life. We thank you for a transition. We thank you for a season of transition. We thank you for a season of miracles. We thank you, Lord God, for this month of March and what you're springing forth in March. We thank you for what you are allowing to blossom up in March, what is opening up in March. We thank you for open doors, dear God. We thank you for newness. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing blessings to spring forth and overtake us, dear God. We thank you for opening up the windows of heaven. We are under an open heaven. We thank you, Lord God, for there are no boundaries, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, for we're not putting you in a box, dear God. We will not limit you, God, because you can do anything but fail oh lord god all we have to do is knock and ask oh lord god all we have to do is seek you all we have to do is trust you oh god we thank you lord god for allowing us to be able to stand on your word we thank you for giving us the authority lord god to be able to call those things lord god that are not as though they were we thank you lord god for we walk by faith and not by sight we thank you lord god for being the author and the finisher of our faith we thank Thank you, God, for you know our ending from our beginning. We give you the glory. We thank you for this night, God, this night of rest, this night of victory. We thank you for this night of wisdom, dear God. 
this night of impartation. We thank you for your word. We thank you for revelation, dear God. We thank you for your stories, dear God. We thank you for your truth, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be able to open up your book of life, dear God. Once again, dear God, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing forth the word, dear God, and let the word spring forth on the inside of us, dear God. We thank you for tonight, Lord God, that we are going to be able to receive your word and not just receive your word, eat your word. And Lord God, after eating your word, we're going to digest your word and then we're going to walk out your word and we're going to obey your word, dear God. Oh God, we thank you that as we obey your word, we're going to trust your word, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, for being the head of our life. We thank you, Lord God, for we are above and not beneath, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, dear God, that we are the lender and not the borrower. We thank you, Lord God, that we are blessed going out and blessed coming in. We thank you, Lord God, that we bless whatever we touch, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, hallelujah, we give you the glory. We give you the praise, dear God. Uh, and it is so, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is awesome. He is wonderful, he is great, and he is glorious. I am so excited tonight. Happy, happy March to each and every one of you. Oh, I love it when I look outside and I see flowers blooming. I see all kinds of things. I, I see trees, life come back to trees, leaves come back to the branches. I, I, I just love it. New leaves, new things spring forth. I love it. I love it. Uh, sometimes God has to kill off things before we can get life back. New things to spring forth. I thank God for new seasons. I thank God for change. I thank God for transition. Oh, God is awesome. He is great. He is glorious. We recognize that in every season in our life, though we may not like every season in our life, but it is important to have every season in our life for growth for growth and for and to help us to transition and to kill some things that need to be killed off it may be our attitude it may be certain um friends that uh or company that we keep and when i say kill of course i mean spiritual spiritually god is so awesome he is great okay if you would co go with me to uh our memory verses that we're going to have is matthew chapter 6 Verse 25 through 34, and I'm going to try to read that quickly. That is our memory verse. And in your study time this week, I ask that you really go into um, those verses and really study those verses. Um, they're very important. Okay, so Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, and I am reading from the NIV Study Application Bible. So it reads just a little different. But the same thing, the same meaning here. All right. Matthew 6 verse 25 says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can anyone of you by worrying, worrying at single at a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek, I love this verse, underline this verse, so highlight it. Verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
So God is letting us know that he is our daddy and he's going to clothe us. He's going to look after us. He knows what we need more than what we think we need. He knows and he's got us. And sometimes in uh, the situations that we tend to uh, be in at times, uh, depending on the season, sometimes it can be so bleak and so harsh that we don't, we can't even think about the next day. We have to just let each day take care of itself. And God is saying, I got your tomorrow. I just need you to seek me first. Seek me first. Trust me. Get into my word first. Let me do the rest. Sometimes we'll, we tend to focus on the distractions instead of God. But if we focus on God, God will handle the distractions. Our title for tonight is Our Story Has Been Written. How many of us have a story? We all have a story. We all have a personal book. And God is our author. He's so awesome. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God is the author of our story. But I love God so much that from the very beginning, he has always given us a choice. We have a choice. We have two books. One book could be the book that God wants to complete our story. That book is the one when we allow him to be the author and the finisher of our faith. We allow him to write in the pages. We just flow with it. We flow with it by getting into his word. We flow with it by trusting him. We flow with it out of obedience. We flow with it by worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Regardless, we flow with it. Or we can take it out of his hands as we do sometimes and try to take care of it ourselves. That's when we begin to write in our own book. That's the second book. And we begin to fill in the pages. I wouldn't recommend your own book when it comes to our spiritual life. Because that book is a mess. That book, in it's not a bestseller. And it stays on the shelf full of dust. That book is hard for it to be completed the right way. It can be completed, but you may not like the ending. I trust God in the book that he has for me. I want him to be the author of my story, the finisher of my faith. I want you to come with me to John 1, John chapter 6, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 6. John chapter 6, and we're going to go there together. Verses 1 through 6. When you have it, say, I have the word. God is awesome. As you turn and get ready, I am turning with you. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 6. God is so good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Again, John chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was there. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. I want you to underline or highlight verse 6. It says, He asked this only to test him, he being Jesus, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. God already has in mind what he's going to do in our life. When we are under any type of issue, trial, problems, 
uncertainty that we're facing though we come to God like we're supposed to though we have our request though we have our petitions out and we're praying to God God already has in mind how he's going to fix it he already has in mind what he's going to do because he is God and he is all sovereign he is omnipotent so God already has in mind what he is going to do Verse 7 says, Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Verse 8 says, another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Now, let's back up right there. Um, underline that verse eight. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Verse nine, underline that as well or highlight that. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Now, again, um, he is reasoning. Andrew is reasoning in his mind right now. Um, he's looking on the natural as we do. And he's looking at these five small loaves. And two small fish and the disciples alone, which is 12 of them, the disciples alone, that would be hard to be able to. Uh, feed or satisfy 12 or 13 that would be hard alone and you're talking about a large crowd and as we go more into the story you will see that it's 5,000 5,000 for five small loaves of bread and two small fish is isn't that like us we, as children of God, we look on the natural when we are supposed to go through the spiritual. We limit God and we forget. We put God in a box and we don't do that on purpose. But we see on the natural. We see something that is um, physically impossible to do. But I'm so God glad that we serve God and there's nothing about him. Physics does not define God. He is not defined by our laws of physics. He's not defined by what can only happen on the natural. I'm so glad that God operates in the supernatural. And so let's continue on. And it says, I love it that Jesus says in verse 10, I like that as well. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down about 5,000 men were there. Now, I need you to, to get this. Jesus didn't panic. Of course not. He was the son of God, the very word of God. So, of course, he already knew what the word could do. How powerful the word was. Get this. Jesus was the son of God, the very word of God. He already knew what the word could do, how powerful the word was. He was the word um, wrapped up into flesh. So by Jesus being the word and knowing how powerful the word was, when he spoke, he was the word. He says, I need you to have the people sit. He could have had them stand up to perform whatever he needed to do. But listen to this. He wanted them to be prepared. I need them to be prepared before I do my miracle. I need the people to be prepared and seated at the rightful place before I perform my miracle. My word has got to go forth first, which is Jesus Christ. The word always went forth first before a miracle was performed. My word has got to go forth first. Which he said, have the people sit down. Preparation. Before God can perform anything, which we know God can do anything, there are no limits. But before God, let me rephrase that, performs anything or will perform anything, he needs us to be positioned. 
Preparation is all about being in perfect position. Jesus could have done this one particular thing while they were still standing up. While the large crowd, the mass, the multitude of people, which were 5,000, he still could have done this great thing while they were standing up. But he wanted them to be in position. And he says, I need you to have them sit down. There are times in our life that before God performs anything, he can do anything but fail. He can do it immediately. He can do it within a blink of an eye. But God wants us to be in position. He is trying to get us prepared first. There are times that we think we are ready for a blessing, but we're not. We are not prepared. God says, I want to bless you and I want to open up this door for you and I want to give this to you, but you're not ready yet. You're still standing. You're still wandering around. You're still looking to your left and to your right. You're still anxious. When my word says be anxious for nothing, I need you to be seated. I need you to be prepared. I need you to be positioned. I want to make sure you're ready to receive. If you're standing up, if you're looking everywhere else, if you're looking to your right, to your left, if you're, if you're looking to your neighbors to bless you, you're not ready because what I want to give you, I want to make sure that you're at the right position to receive what I have for you. Because this blessing that I have for you and is, is going to be a special blessing. This thing is going to be a supernatural thing that's going to blow your mind. And you won't understand it when I give it to you. You might speak against it. So I don't want you to speak against it. I don't want you to miss your blessing. I want you to receive it because what I have for you is, is, is past the very laws of physics. It's past what anybody could even comprehend. And what I'm going to give you is so big, you have to be positioned and prepared in order to receive it. I want to make sure that that you are in this position, that you're seated, that you are prepared for this, because I want to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. I want to make sure crumbs are not dropped. You know, one thing I love about going to a great restaurant, you go to a nice, fine dining restaurant, you go inside and you see the hostess and the hostess greets you and and the hostess brings you to the table. Um, they don't just come up to you, hand you a, a menu and tell you to order right there and then just bring the food to you while you're standing they bring you to the table then after you're seated at the table after your position after you're prepared then they give you the menu and you can look at the menu and when you go to a really nice restaurant one thing I love about it the price is not even on those menus uh, you have an idea that is probably very expensive but you have no idea how much it costs Oh, I love that. I love those types of restaurants. I don't go to those restaurants all the time. But when I go, I know I'm going to be blessed. By what's on the menu, it's going to be some fine dining. It's going to be some good food. It's going to be some filet mignon. I love filet mignon. It's going to be some caviar. It's going to be some good stuff. It's going to be some duck. It's going to be some good stuff that I don't, lamb. It's going to be some stuff that I normally don't have. But this type of seating. God says for me to prepare this type of blessing and put you at a king's table. I need you to be seated because if you're standing up while you're eating, you can drop some food. You can get some food on the floor. You can you can spill it over. I need you to be prepared so you can get it all and be full and be satisfied. One thing I love about that is that when they give you the food, you can always ask for a box or a doggy bag and take some more home. And have dinner that night, or if it's late that night already, have your breakfast or your lunch. Because I love it when you have more than enough. You have an abundance. You have an, over, you have an overflow. And that is how God loves to rock us. He loves to bless us. He wants to give us more than enough. He wants to give us an overflow. But God says in order to do that, you need to be positioned and you need to be prepared. As my mom used to say, get somewhere and sit down. 
Let me bless you. Get into my word. Position yourself. And when you're positioned, then you're open to receive. And I can do the supernatural blessing that you need, that you've been asking for, that you've been praying for. Don't go to your neighbor. Don't complain about this. Don't constantly complain about that. God says, I need you to be positioned. That's all I want you to do is be positioned, be prepared, get into my closet, get into my throne room. Instead of getting on the telephone and complaining and and whining, get into my closet, get into my throne room, continue to speak my word and be positioned and watch what I do. All right, let's continue to um, go on. Uh, Let's go to verse 11 as we turn the page. I'm turning the page with you here. Verse 11 says, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Get this, verse 12. Now, I want you to underline and or highlight verse 11 and same thing with verse 12. When they had all had enough to eat, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. There were leftovers from 5,000. Now, get it. He had five small loaves. And two small fish fed 5,000 and still had leftover. Everyone was satisfied, was satisfied. Verse 13 says, so they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. God says, I want to give you an abundance I want to give you more than enough. And so let's, this is one thing that I want to also talk about. Which is very important. And so I just want to make sure. All right. So verse 11, I didn't really go into, and I want you guys to get this right here. Um, Jesus then took the loaves. We're backing up to verse 11 because I read that fast. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. I need you to get what, what Jesus did. He took the loaves. And he presented it to God. And he gave thanks. I I, I need you to know how powerful that is. How powerful that that was. When we are praying to God, it's so important that when we get into the throne room, our closet, beside our bed, whatever your throne room is, whatever your closet is, and you're asking God and you have these petitions, it's so important to give thanks to God. One thing about Jesus is that Jesus, it didn't even say that Jesus asked God, I need you to do this for me. I need you to perform this for me. We have 5,000 people. God, I need you to make a way. I, I need you to do this. Jesus already knew the power of God, of course. It says that Jesus then look, took the loaves and gave thanks. There are times that God knows us so well that after we've prayed and prayed and prayed over a thing, God says, you've already prayed over it. You've already asked me about it. Now I just want you to trust me and give me thanks for it. Give me thanks for that blessing. Give me thanks for that petition. Give me thanks for that request. Whatever you're asking me for, I need you to give me thanks. Thank me for it. Trust me for it. And watch me perform it. I love how Jesus did that. And then after he gave God thanks for it, he was able to distribute the miracle, the blessing. And and I'm not going to be before you long. But verse six, I want you to write this down. And it's very important that you remember these. These are these are four um, key points. 
Verse 6, God always has a plan in mind. Verse 9, see with spiritual eyes. I need you to look at things with spiritual eyes. Verse 10, preparation is key. Position yourself. Allow yourself to be positioned so you can be prepared to receive the blessing. And then verse 11, give thanks. Position yourself in your prayer time with God. Position yourself, give thanks to God. Be prepared. Give thanks to God. Rejoice in the blessing. Even though you may not see it, rejoice in that thing. Because you know God is not a man that he would have limits or restraints. God can do anything but fail. And he loves you so much. He wants to bless you. He just wants you to be positioned. And he wants you to be prepared for this blessing. So that you can receive all of it. All of it. And be satisfied. And be full. And have more than enough. He does not want you to leave empty or dry. God is so good. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this night. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for positioning us, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you that we shall be prepared, prepared, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We shall be positioned, dear God, for your word, dear God. We thank you, Lord God, that we trust you, dear God. We believe, Lord God. We thank you for the manifestation, dear God. We thank you for the supernatural blessing. We thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the abundance. We thank you for giving us more than enough. We thank you, Lord God, for we are at a place right now Lord God that we are ready to receive we're not looking to our right or to our left we're looking up toward you God we're in our throne room God we're in our prayer room we're in our prayer closet right now Jesus uh, Lord God we're not whining about it Lord God we're not complaining about it Lord God we're just trusting you God we're standing on your word we're standing on your promises dear God for we know that all of your promises are yea and amen dear God you are great and you are good and you are glorious dear God and we lift you up dear God you are a mighty God and we know we serve a mighty God and we thank you Lord God for living in our life dear God we thank you for blessing us dear God we thank you Lord God for Philippians 4 6 Lord God for your word says don't worry about anything but in all your prayers ask God for what you need always asking him with a thankful heart dear God we thank you for Philippians 4 19 and with all his abundant wealth through Christ Jesus my God will supply all your needs we thank you Lord God for 2 Corinthians 5 17 anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being the old is gone the new has come we thank you for Romans 8 28 uh, we know all things work together for good to those who love God um, Lord God we thank you Lord God for Luke 11 9 asking it will be given to you. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, we thank you for James 1, 6. Uh, but let him ask in faith uh, with nothing doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave uh, of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. Uh, we thank you for Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans for welfare and not for evil. Uh, to give you a few future and a hope. Uh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the plans you have for us. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for being the author and the finisher of our faith. Um, and Lord God, most importantly, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for writing our story. Um, we thank you for being the author of our book. Uh, and we're going to continue, Lord God, to let you write in our pages. Uh, we're going to continue to let you be our author. Uh, we love you, Lord God. Uh, we trust you, Lord God. Uh, and we thank you for this great and awesome week. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I cannot wait to have supper with you again next Monday night at 7 p.m. Again, this is Antoinette McCormick. Be free from the inside out. I love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye. Amen. You have been listening to Evangelist Antoinette McCormick on Be Free from the Inside Out radio show each and every Monday night at 7 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. We pray that you were blessed by the uh, broadcast on tonight, the radio show, each and every Monday night. And we'll let you know tomorrow night will be CWM Radio Show with your radio host, Apostle Michael Branch. And on Wednesday night, we have Restoring Souls to Christ Radio Show with your radio host, Pastor Brenda D. Wilson. 
And at 9 o'clock, <clears throat> we have Men to Men Talk Back the Talk Up Show with your radio host, Pastor Nino, and co host, Pastor Carl Young. So we're going to have a great topic for you on Wednesday night at 9. And we're going to have a great message for you on Wednesday night and tomorrow night. So y'all tune back in tomorrow night on uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for CWM Radio Apostle Michael Branch. I'm sure that there will be a word from the Lord on tomorrow night. That I'll tell you, uh, we've been uh, so blessed by the messages um, each and every week by different uh, women, men of God that come on this radio broadcast that have their show. And we thank God for all of you listeners. If you are listening on the radio, please share this on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, or any other social media page that you have, and let us know how we're doing. If you enjoy the radio show, let us know. Drop us a comment on the comment uh, board to let us know how we are doing and what we can do to improve this radio broadcast. Again, we bring you uh, all the listening ears from around the world. And not just here in America, but around the globe. And we want to thank those that are listening in by way of the prayer groups that are uh, connected with us. And we just thank God for each and every one of you. And we pray that something said on tonight, bless your spirit in abundance. We're going to continue with the music and we'll be back. So stay tuned. You know, sometimes things get really heavy. So I've invited some of my friends to help me out on this one. Mr. Terry Birch, Sakina Joseph, a city on the hill where y'all at, and little old me, Mr. T.Y., W.E., Double B. Corey, this is for you, baby, sis. Your victory is now. Sitting here in my room, tears flow from my face.
Oh, we cooking. We cooking. Listen, we get ready to go, and we thank you for tuning in on Be Free from the Inside Out. Once again, meet us back on 7 p.m. at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another message from Evangelist Antoinette McCormick. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.